Hello everyone and welcome back to the Clutch International. It's the finals, Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Caruana, world number two versus uh, world number one. And uh, this is game three. Game one and game two ended in a draw uh, and this one is, is quite uh, the game. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's check it out. So Magnus with the white pieces opens with d4. Uh, Fabi goes for knight to f6 and bishop to f4. Magnus goes for his London setup. Uh, we have d5 and e3. Uh, we have c5 by Fabi, uh, striking in the center, and knight to f3. Magnus continues development, knight to c6, and knight b to d2. Uh, Magnus prefers this uh, than, than, uh, rather than going for the c3 idea. Uh, and now Fabi goes for the dark square bishop right away with knight to h4. Uh, sorry, knight to h5. Now, the bishop is under attack and, uh, well, for the moment doing a good job preventing black from, from going e5. So here we have d captures on c5. Still not a problem, still have sufficient control of e5, and here Fabi grabs it. Knight captures on f4, pawn captures, and queen to a5 now. Uh, just uh, preparing to uh, win the c5 pawn. So Magnus continues development with bishop to d3 and queen captures on c5. This was all played before, and it's not nothing new. Uh, Magnus castles uh, and g6. Now Fabi prepares to fianchetto to his dark square bishop uh, as it will be very useful on this diagonal. And here there is one game in the database where knight to e5 was played but Magnus goes knight to b3 uh, with an attack on the queen and it is as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So uh, let's see what Fabi comes up with. He shifts the queen over to d6, will come uh, in handy if at some point you want to uh, strike with e5. We have queen to d2 by Magnus, connecting rooks, and uh, at some point, I believe in the Pog Champs Championship, there was uh, a term was coined uh, when you connect rooks that uh, the rooks become bros for life. Now, uh, I don't know, I, I, I kind of enjoyed this term. So I thought you you guys w would enjoy hearing about it. Uh, so queen d2, connecting rooks, bishop to g7, now fin carrying the dark square bishop, and now c3, numbing the, the dark square bishop and also uh, taking away some nice squares from the dark knight on c6. Uh, finally, Fabi castles, and now rook f to e1, getting the rook into the game, and now bishop to g4, putting pressure on the knight. For the moment, uh, the e5 square is off limits for the white knight as it is uh, defended three times, so uh, you cannot uh, use the outpost. So queen to e3, uh, now just uh, defending the knight, and here Fabi decides to, to grab the knight. Bishop captures, queen captures, and e6 now, and black has a, a, a very solid position here. Uh, and uh, h4 by Magnus. He wants to play h5, bust open the position. Uh, however, Fabi says, uh, no you don't. He goes h5 himself. And now g3, creating some light square weaknesses around the white king, uh, but you still have a light square bishop. So if needed, if black... Uh, and goes for some sort of an attack, you can always just shift the bishop uh, to defense uh, uh, if such uh, such a thing is needed. So rook f to e8, uh, Fabi gets the rook into the game, he will bring this rook to d8 and then maybe uh, even go for this uh, e5 idea. Uh, we have rook a to d8 uh, and now a6. Fabi first prepares to uh, further expand on the queen side and now uh, a very interesting move. Magnus goes knight to d2 and now uh, the knight from d2 can be useful for a lot of things. You can play c4, for example, at some point you can go knight to f1 to maybe e3. Uh, but Fabi's next move allows Magnus to really make use of this knight. Here, Fabi plays b5, uh, just a nice uh, nice expanding move. Maybe you can bring your knight, let's say, to, to c4, perhaps. Uh, but also, uh, just, uh, just a nice expansion. And you can bring your, your rook into the game on the next move. However, this allows Magnus to go for knight to e4. And it's... Uh, it's a very tricky idea because if the knight is captured, then bishop captures opens up an attack on the queen and a double attack on the knight here. And if you don't want to lose terribly and face captures followed by a double attack, uh, you will have to go knight to d4. Now you free up your uh, pin piece by attacking white's queen. And here we would see rook captures still with an attack on the queen, bishop captures here, and now bishop captures on a8. And once the bishop retreats, uh, white just uh, has an extra pawn and, uh, and a very... Uh, enjoyable position. So instead, after this knight to e4 idea, Fabi moves back, queen to d7, and now knight to g5. And now, uh, after Magnus uh, grabs hold of the g5 square, uh, it's incredibly difficult to kick this knight away from here. You could you could kick it away with f6, but that's just uh, really weakening uh, the king's position. Then g6 becomes weak, e6 becomes weak, and it's it's something you never do. 
So uh, Fabi just continues, rook a to d8, uh, mobilizes uh, all of his pieces, and now bishop to c2. Uh, f uh, clearing the d file for the rook, but also uh, in anticipation of b4, prepares bishop to a4. And this is indeed Fabi's next move. Fabi took some time to come up with his idea here, and after playing b4, Magnus did go for bishop to a4. There was the sort of critical line g4, but it... Uh, maybe maybe requires a, a bit too much time to calculate and it is a rapid game uh so point is after you, everything is traded let's say captures 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 and captures that the queen will be very strong here and h5 will be uh will be a very nice threat uh, and also for example if bishop captures on c3 yes you have to give up the pawn but after rook e3 let's say bishop d4 rook goes back uh still the the position remains and white has a lot of attacking potential here uh, in the position uh, so it, it was possible, however, Magnus goes for bishop to a4 instead, puts pressure on the knight, which is a much more natural idea. Uh, and here Fabi just captures, this was his plan all along. We have b captures on c3, and now uh, you, need to, you need to prepare for g4 somehow, maybe... Uh, play rook to f8, rook to e7, uh, add another defender to the to the f7 pawn as it could be a bit dangerous. Uh, however, Fabi decided to unpin and here uh, he played queen to c8. But now, uh, incredible as it e as it is, uh, the position is lost for Fabi uh, and it's not uh, easy to spot why. But uh, you know you are in your own home, I presume. Uh, comfortable. Uh, I, I hope you guys are warm also. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning idea for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on really finding a, a beautiful line. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's F5. Uh, f5 in combination with c4, but not c4 followed by f5, as it is different. Uh, I'm just going to show it. For example, if c4 first, uh, of course, black cannot capture, as the knight would be hanging. Uh, the queen and bishop are nicely attacking it. So this is what black would do. You would unpin with knight to d4, attack white's queen, again, the same idea. And then we would have this uh, trade. Uh, rook captures, bishop captures, 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 and now uh, c captures on d5. e captures, rook captures on e8 with check captures and now you get this position where you can push f5 uh, to try and bust open the position but black can just ignore you with let's say g uh, king g7 uh, and it's not as potent as uh, pushing f5 right away from that position uh, even though this is all uh, also much better for white however here magnus played f5 first and this is just uh, much more crushing uh, because you don't allow black to really, uh, really uh, trade everything off. Uh, because if you don't react to this, if you try something, uh, well, anything, let's say you try rook to f8, uh, you're going to get f captures on g6, captures and queen to d3. And now there are uh, so many weaknesses here. This is a weakness, this is a weakness, this is a weakness, the e6 pawn, the g6 pawn is a weakness. So everything is a weakness here and the black will not with withstand all the pressure. So uh, another thing uh, you could do after f5 is go, for example, e captures on f5, but then you just remove the defender of the d5 pawn. Rook captures on e8, check, captures and queen captures here. Now again with a double attack on the knight and a double attack on the f7 pawn, there is no there's no defending this so fabi did the third thing he decided to capture with the g pawn but now you weaken the h pawn and also now c4 is incredibly strong uh, because you, you just uh, threatened to completely bust open the position there's still the problem of this knight here of the pin here and uh, fabi here goes knight to d4 as na uh, it, it's a similar line to the one we've shown only now g captures on f5 was already played so this is uh, very important for the position so rook captures on d4, like in the previous line, bishop captures on d4, we have captures, captures, uh, and now queen captures on h5. But now it's different because of just captures, uh, the queen is threatening to capture here and follow it by queen h7 checkmate, or the other way around, just check and checkmate. Uh, so you have to defend it. And here, uh, rook to e7 uh, maybe uh, is, uh, is also possible, or queen to d7. However, Fabi played queen to c7, and this is... Uh, giving uh, uh, giving uh, Carlson's attack a bit too much wind, as now the rook here is undefended. So here uh, he did make it a bit easier for Magnus, but uh, whatever he did was also completely losing. So here c captures on d5, 
you cannot recapture because of rook captures on e8 with the check. So rook to e7 now adds another defender here, but now Magnus just grabs the e6 pawn as well. Here, Fabi kicks away the knight with f6, but now queen g6 check. Very tricky because uh, rook here, uh, <laughs> you get queen here with checkmate. The knight is covering the h7 square. Uh, there's nowhere to go for the king. So after queen g6 check, king to f8 was played, but now uh, knight back to f3, getting the knight out of harm's way, but with tempo, attacking the bishop here. And after bishop to c3, what Fabi played, uh, Magnus played rook to c1. And now there's a lot of pressure on this bishop here. And it's not easy for black to even find the move. For example, if you any move you play, like let's say you try rook g7, not allow any checks, uh, the bishop guards the f6 pawn, so that's not that's off limits. Uh, but let's say queen h6, now with ideas of just check, king here and grabbing the rook, let's say king g8, and now queen e3, there's no saving the bishop. So all sorts of tricks are in the position. So uh, after this rook to c1 move, uh, Fabi tried rook captures on e6, but now it's the same idea. Uh, there are uh, a lot of ways, of course, you could play this. Magnus played knight to d4. Uh, now, again, uh, making use of this pin. Of course, you cannot capture. The queen hangs. Attacks the rook, attacks the f5 pawn. So Fabi has to play something. Rook to b6. And now uh, he goes for the idea that we've already mentioned. As it's important to see that uh, the rook is unable to join the defense of the bishop. This square is covered by the knight and also this square by the knight and the pawn. So rook will not be able to help out with the defense of the bishop. So, uh, it only means one thing. Queen to h6 check, and you bring the queen into the attack on the bishop. King g8, and now queen to e3, with a double attack on the bishop here. And it was in this position on move 37 uh, that Fabiano Caruana resigned the game, and the game 3 goes to Magnus, who takes the lead in the clutch international finals. So here you resign as there is nothing more to be done here. And the bishop captures on d4, although it looks very interesting since it kind of offers a queen trade. Not really because of queen e8 check and you just get checkmated. King g7 captures with check, you lose the queen. And here it's just a nice checkmate with rook or queen to h7, doesn't really matter. So yeah, Fabio of course saw this and after uh, queen to e3 he resigned the game. So uh, really, really uh, impressive stuff. Again, uh, Magnus gets a win against uh, such an elite player like Fabi with uh, none other than the London system. And I always remember what uh, Kramnik said after after he lost the Kramnik uh, after he lost the Carlson uh, in the World Blitz Championship uh, uh, in the previous one, uh, where Carlson went for the London system. And uh, Kramnik said in an interview after the game, uh, yes, uh, I, I lost, but uh, the, the London system is still bad. However, Magnus is good. So that's, uh, th th it's the way it is. So yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jacob Gonzalez, uh, Peter Mann, uh, Thomas Jenkins, uh, Devashish uh, Gopalan, and David um, uh, Vezolovsky for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Clutch Chess International Finals, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.